Right, we should be back. Uh, just in time for Far Berserker <laughs> to have sent me Fallout 4 Automaton. Thank you, Far Berserker. I do appreciate it. Right, um, let us get KSP started up. It's got a bunch of mods. Don't even ask me what mods. There are many mods. It's 1.1.1 and the latest version is 1.1.3 and I did try and get it up to run in the latest version. Uh, but I, I gave up. I'm not that adept at like tinkering with KSP mods. So uh, it, it's slightly buggy. It's not game crashingly buggy actually, but there's some visual bugs. Uh, sorry Raylan, <laughs> if you wanted to see some uh, Armored Warfare. Perhaps next time. I haven't done KSP on stream for a while though. So that'll be nice. Uh, let's see if it will pick up the client or if I'm going to have to do screen recording. I might have to do screen recording. It's also going to take a little moment to load up KSP because it's got a bunch of mods. And... Oh, there we go. I thought I would have to restart it. Sometimes it doesn't quite start up properly, which might just be a 1.1.1 thing. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> there, there, Raylin. There, there. We still love you. Let me let me just play this tiny violin for you. Right there, we go. It's loading up. Um, right, if I turn off that, and now we have a black screen. Wonderful. No, it's not going to pick it up with client capture, so we're going to have to do monitor capture. There we go. Now, one nice thing that's been since um, the jump from 105 to 1.1 is because we're now uh, on Unity whatever, um, it's a stable 64-bit client on Windows, which is fantastic. Lots more mods uh, are... You can run lots more mods without it running into the same memory limit problem. So I can basically make use of all the RAM that I've got because KSP works by ro uh, loading a lot of stuff into RAM. And with the 32-bit client, it was basically running out of... Um, it could only address so much RAM. Was it like... Was it a 4 gigabyte limit or something like that? So if you went over that, it just crashed. Doesn't happen with the 64-bit version. And also the FPS is better with the large craft, which is really quite nice. So we're almost there. It's, it's loading... It's definitely loading. <laughs> don't actually know how many people have stuck around. They're still saying 67 viewers. I think we're up to 75 at the peak, which wasn't bad. Now, what I am doing in KSP, I'm probably going to do this as a video. I'm planning my first Duna mission. I've never been to the KSP equivalent of Mars. I've never been beyond the, the Kerbal system itself, or, or the... Uh, Kerbin and its two moons. I've never been to any of the other planets. I've only been to the two uh, companion moons. So um, it's a bit of a big step for me. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Right, let's resume Korea. I do have the sandbox save in here as well. So I could load up the TOG station. Um, I've got the Challenger, actually. Uh, that's of, of all the Wolf vehicles, that's the one I picked up uh, when they were first on sale railing. So, yeah, I did not regret it. It was um, quite a nice buy. Right, so, uh, what current missions have I got going on? Um, I could take that one, actually. That's worth a fair bit of cash. I'll show you the current, like, the craft, the current craft going on in orbit. So I've got, um, that's somebody to be rescued that is in orbit around the sun and I've just never got around to it yet because frankly it's going to be a pain in the arse to do but at some point we're going to go and rescue that guy. Uh, I've got my main Kerbal Space, uh, Kerbin uh, Space Station which if you've been watching my YouTube videos and you've been watching any of uh, the, the, the book videos, the first one I did was on The Man in the High Castle. For some reason, even before I started reading The Man in the High Castle, long before, I have just been for a while calling my actual stations High Castle, because I just like the name. 
So yeah, the, the frame rate's not great because there's a lot of parts, but with 1.05, there would have been a lot more parts. Uh, a lot more... Uh, the frame rate would have been worse, is what I'm trying to say. So we've got... I don't know how many Kerbals in my station. Um, you can actually... I, I like this, that you can do the interior view. I think that's really nice. I've even got a mod that lets me switch the focus. So I can like switch the focus to this forward science module or I can put the focus in the middle of the station, or I can look in that little hitchhiker module there. I don't think there's anyone in that one. So I've been basically adding stuff on as modules. Um, this was, uh, this, I'd actually like to get rid of this, but if I try and detach it, it goes incredibly wobbly. Uh, but this is my original like fuel dump area. Um, so, uh, but otherwise like this half the station is uh, like all hab areas and this half the station is just fuel. And I've got a couple of little things. Now, if you remember back to the TOG station and all that, and I had my, my splucks, my little space buggy, my little uh, <coughs> monoprop uh, moving vehicle, I've basically kept that philosophy. So anytime I launch something, um, the launch vehicle comes and parks alongside, and then I go and grab it with this little dude here, which is basically a monoprop fuel tank with a control ring and some solar panels, batteries, and uh, docking ports. And it basically goes and latches on and then uh, attaches the thing. So, yeah, I, I really liked that idea from when I was doing the International Tog Station. So I just kept it over for this time. But I've now got, um, like, two big main fuel tanks, which is a lot less fussy than all these little fuel tanks here. Uh, so that's just purely decorative at this point. Uh, that's a return capsule. So all the Kerbals, you know, if there was an emergency of some kind, or if I decided there was an emergency, I could get all the Kerbals in there and they could just, like, float gently back down to the planet. Um, I've got this kind of utility vehicle here, which is kind of like a manned version of this, except it's got a rocket motor. It's got a very flat rocket motor. That is, in fact, a rocket. So uh, that's got enough delta V that it can go and do stuff in orbit, and it can also grab onto things. Um, that cockpit, I love those cockpits. That's part of, I think, KW... Is it KW rocketry? No, it's B9. So you get this kind of... Um, it, it's not at a great angle, but you get this this kind of glass cockpit and it's just it gives you this fantastic surround view Except at the moment it's sort of parked perpendicular to the space station So you don't really get the full effect there, but I, I love those cockpits. They're fantastic uh, The rest of the crew were all just in various other bits of the station. Now I've got somebody in the cupola module um, as you can see with all the displays, that's Scatterer giving the atmosphere that effect, by the way. Um, we've got some people in the science module, which is actually producing some science for me at the moment. And I think I've got a couple of people just sitting around in various interior modules. So yeah, it's just a mix of um, habitation, science, and like fuel storage depot. So it's just a general space station, basically. But uh, I'm quite pleased with the way it looks overall. So, I've got a couple of other space stations. And they're basically ones that I built to fulfill contracts. So, that that's like my grand main space station. And the rest of these are just... Uh, did I just click on the VAB? I didn't mean to click on the VAB. Yeah, I clicked on the VAB. Uh, the rest of them, I'll only show you one of them, but they were built specifically to fulfill contracts for the least amount of money. So, let's uh, take a look at one of those. And I've been naming them after sci-fi authors because of course. So this one is the Banks. The first one was called the Asimov. Because I'm a tremendous nerd, if you hadn't noticed already. So yeah, this was just like... Look at the FPS in comparison. So this is just a very, very cheap fulfilled a contract space station. Just kind of flo oh, pardon me, floats there. It's just habitation, basically. No science lab or anything like that. Um, I was quite pleased with the effect with the, the lights, though. I like that mod, especially the surface lights mod. Uh, if there was somebody in there, we could actually have a look in the cockpit, but we can't. So yeah, that one's just floating around Minmus, just, you know just there. Why not? Um, what else can I show you? Oh, I've got some surface mining operations going on. I have been doing a whole bunch of um, 
satellite contracts. So if I toggle probes on there, there's suddenly you know a bunch of satellites appear, but uh, most of them aren't very interesting. I do have a couple of resource probes though, but I'll take a look at one of the uh, the drilling rigs. <clears throat> there's nobody actually on those space stations, but you know there could be in theory. If some of my Kerbals got stranded whilst on moon landing missions, I could send them up to the space stations and they'd be a bit more comfortable. Right, we're in night time at the moment, apparently. We'll see if they've got any ore to convert. Not really. So, yeah, the, the idea of these things is that they just sit here, drill, and they're basically... Um, they're not particularly big landers, actually. That's, like, the, the extent of it. But... Um, in theory, they would, you know, park uh, here for a while, make fuel, and then when they're full, they can go and sit in orbit and fuel up any passing, you know, spaceships that might happen past. I could send something into orbit around the moon and then refuel it at the moon kind of thing. Hopefully, I'll, I'll show you the Minma spawn. Hopefully that's in daylight and you can actually get a proper look at it. No, that also is on the night time of that, so never mind. Um, oh, and I guess the last thing I can show you that's currently actually flying is... Um, no, 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 Dagonazal. Uh, Dagonazal, even. I can, of course, deadlift a truck. What are you talking about? I do even lift, bro, obviously. Obviously. So, there, yeah, this is my Duna mission, which has probably got way more Delta V than it needs. I've got this main stage, this, like, I don't know what you call it, transfer stage with four of these nuclear engines so low thrust high efficiency and that meant that i could launch this main stage with just uh liquid fuel no oxidizer and then i've got my actual lander stage and it's an integrated all-in-one lander which is what i've been doing with my landers in this particular career playthrough uh i could actually maybe go and land on the moon or something but the idea is and this is a slightly modified design that it's um like the return, like this is basically the entire return capsule and there's a, a heat shield there. And when it gets back to the atmosphere, it just jettisons the engine off. And this this part here actually is the, the part that lands. And I can maybe show you that in the VAB. So, I mean, I could just do a contract or two or I could, I could show you off my... Um, I won't show what, uh, off that mars lander exactly because it's quite expensive to launch but the moon missions the uh the the designs i've been using for the moon landers are basically the same thing uh let's see it's going to be that one so yeah it, it's basically the same principle except with slightly different parts for some reason i decided to do it this way and it's not particularly efficient but um i just liked the idea of being able to have the landing legs inside the service bay along with all the other junk so it, it just kind of it just kind of lands and does it that way um so i just launch one of these should we just go to the moon do i have any contracts to go to the moon maybe we'll have a look also it's still saying i've got 67 viewers i don't think that's right oh hello Bear with me. Technical difficulties. KSP, why have you crashed? Don't know what happened there. So now you get to enjoy my wonderful orange desktop. Yes. Well done, Kerbal Space Program. Well done. So, anyway. Um... What should we talk about while it's loading? Television! I've been watching television. Sometimes I talk about what I'm watching. Maybe I should do that as a YouTube thing as well, but I don't think so. I don't think I will. Um, yeah, what have I been watching? Oh, I started watching Arrested Development on Netflix, and it's been unexpectedly quite funny. I'm also getting towards the end of Chuck. Oh, and here's one for Sombra, if he's still here. I started watching Gunslinger Girl, which is just weird. I'm not sure I want to finish watching that. It's a very odd premise for a show. Very, very odd. Maybe some of you that aren't Sombra might have seen that. But Brett isn't here. Brett's the other person that I would uh, count on to know. That uh, actually, you know, would, would know what I'm talking about. Hey, Island Man. 
But yeah, Gunslinger Girl is very, very strange. Very, very, very strange. Arrested Development is also strange in its own way, but it's amusing. And it's Michael Serra, and he's so young. And Jessica Walter, who is basically about 85% the same character that she is in Archer. It's hilarious. It really is. Jessica Walter is wonderful. Anyway. Let's hope it doesn't crash again. I think, uh, to answer your question, Salty Scrub Tears, um, I, it, it was Caption Guy that set it. I think he was making remarks or implied remarks about my WNA rating. And so he picked orange as my background. There you go. That's the explanation. 100% officially the explanation. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, I've got a rescue mission, but no... Uh, science data from space around Kerbin. It's not exactly a difficult. Build a new surface outpost on the moon. I mean, that's a thing I could do. We could actually design a new surface outpost, a lander that's like a permanent lander. Instead of just doing my usual uh, thing. Shall we do that then? I'm just mucking about at this point. I don't have any serious purpose with... Uh, with continuing to stream KSP. Right, so what was it? Five... Um, I should have checked more carefully. It was five Kerbals, wasn't it? And it possibly... And, oh, I clicked outside the window there. Well, it didn't crash. It's fine. I just clicked outside the window. I did actually import the craft files for the TOG. How would I... Oh, I don't even know. How would I get a TOG to land on the moon? That's a thought. Could I even do that? Right, what does it need? An antenna, a docking port, and it can generate power. It can support five Kerbals, and it needs an engineer. So that's actually not that difficult. I could. I mean, I could try and adopt the uh, adapt even the TOG. I can load it up. I just can't launch it. So it's a question of can I strip off the parts that I don't actually have available, which is probably mostly, if I say, um, if I rename this so I can modify it, okay, right, if we just strip off everything, The question is, are the parts that are actually here parts that the game will let me have? Just on that basis. So, um, let's have a look. No, still contains locked or invalid parts. So I've got to somehow... It might be easier almost to build the thing from scratch rather than try and figure out what parts I am and am not allowed to have. Which is going to be a pain in the ass. I don't want to rebuild the space tog from scratch. I already built the space tog. It'd be nice if it would just tell me what parts I don't have. It might be those solar arrays, actually. Those big solar arrays. Quite possibly. Oh, hello. Didn't mean to pull the side off the turret. Right, we'll save that. And has that done the trick? Nope, there are still not allowed bits. Uh, wheels. Maybe it's the wheels. I haven't fully unlocked the, the tech tree because this is a career mode. There's a lot of stuff I don't have yet. Would it be under utility? Uh, yep, yeah, I'm guessing it's those wheels. So I have to put on different wheels. <laughs> The internals should be fine. And in fact, we could probably get rid of the bottom turret. I mostly added the bottom turret to um, keep the thing... Um, 
like from being asymmetrically uh, aerodynamic when I took it off, but it it kind of it it's kind of a pain. It kind of gets in the way. I might just have to build a really big ass shroud on the thing. I get rid of the tail fins. I can't remember what the root part is. It, it's probably the uh, command capsule, which can take two. So I would need to somehow um, oh, cram in uh, several more. Nope, still has locked or invalid parts. God damn it. What parts? It'd be nice if it just tell me. Oh, that might be it. <laughs> what parts are... Oh, wait, it might be that. I accidentally left one of the Gigantor XL arrays on. Nope, still still can't. Damn it. Right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what parts are the problem. I mean, it might be... The Separatron bits. We don't actually need the whole separating mechanism inside this one. We could get rid of that collar, for instance. Oh. Except <laughs> that's made life slightly awkward. Uh, how do I um, reattach this? <laughs> this is kind of... Hang on. It's not going according to plan. Um, there we go. And that means we could get rid of um, that panel there as well. And we'd have to put those structural panels on. Is it the... Oh, God. Is it the structural panels themselves? Do I not have those big structural panels yet? No, those, oh no, those are like KW parts or something. No, I've got the 2x2 two two panels. I do have the 2x2 two two panels. Right, what say you? No, still can't launch it. This is annoying. I don't know which of the parts I have and which of the parts I don't have. And I'm getting to the point where I'm, I almost can't strip away much more. Well, I'll take off that bottom tail fin. It's a very sad, stripped down looking space tog. Hey, right, that's done it. It was that big tail plane, I think. So, um, we need to close up the bottom. I'm just going to let that hang out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think... Uh, do I want to have it have internal power. How are we going to land this thing? Is it going to... I mean, it's going to have to land on its belly, basically. So I think having rockets at the back isn't that useful. We're going to have to have some way of landing this thing on its belly. This is probably going to be extremely complicated. So I think what we'll do is we'll crash KSP. That's exactly what we'll do. This is going well. This is going very well. Right, while that's starting up, I'm going to get more water. <laughs> so, anyway, yes, what else have I been watching? <laughs> Just every time I load, it gives me an opportunity to talk about, you know, stuff. Deadpool. I finally saw Deadpool. Deadpool was all right. Didn't blow me away, but, you know, it was amusing enough and just... It was all right. It was okay. It was reasonably well done for what it was. I actually did... Um, not... I, it wasn't my intent, but uh, I ended up doing... I, I basically live-tweeted Deadpool. And I don't quite know why I did it. It just kind of happened. Uh, so, yeah. It was a slightly... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, it, I think a few people saw it, but it was just so late at night that maybe not that many did. But uh, the gist of it was that Caption Guy approved of Deadpool more than I did. So there you go. 
I'm sure they'll have that on the box art. You know, it'll be like caption guy, ten out of ten, pointy hair Jedi, seven out of ten. Because <laughs> they would totally do that, right? I'm a well-known film critic, B. Yep. 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 Anyway. Let's resume again. I'm still quite not sure how I'm going to land this thing, much less how I'm going to get it into the air. Right. Um, I oh, just started watching Farscape. I haven't seen Farscape in years, but it's a fantastic show. Max reported himself. Why? What? What? What's Max been up to? Right. Uh, <laughs> just casually assuming the worst. We can strip those off. We don't need those. That's fine. Um, I was just in the process of yeah. I was taking off the engines, wasn't I? And also the fuel tanks. I don't have any fuel storage. I think, oh, I think I still need the central fuel tanks because those are basically structural and you can't just hot swap things. Um, but that bottom tank I can take off. I can take off those side tanks. So this all basically reduces the weight of the thing. Um, Save that. It's always awkward trying to modify existing craft, especially one like that. Okay, no, we can't do that. That's basically the, the central structure piece. So, control Z. There we go. So, um, what are we going to put inside instead? Well, the extra accommodation, of course. Uh, although it's slightly awkward trying to get it in the right... Uh, we're not going to be able to easily transfer crew, which is going to be a bit of a pain, maybe. If I made the... No, that wouldn't work. No, the turret's in the way. Uh, what other options have I got? I guess we really want something that's like the inline cockpit parts. No, those are about the same size, but they basically have the same number of uh, people. Like S2 parts, not really. No, uh, what have we got in utility? We don't have everything unlocked yet. We could just stick in a couple of the, the, the Mark 1 crew cabins, of course. Oh, Mark 2 crew cabins we've got available. got the doors on the side of the tog. It's a bit hard to make doors. If I had infernal robotics you could probably do that without too much difficulty but uh, I don't. What's the actual center part? I think it's that one. So if I change that to there it immediately flips over which is exactly what I wanted it to do. Wait. Uh, oh God, what, what control is the... There we go. What control is the control that controls the control? There we go. <laughs> Everybody panic. Right, I think. Okay, right, so. That's just. Right, okay. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, maybe. Uh, so it's got to have at least five. So basically. A single Mark II crew cabin and a cockpit would do it. But we have what we need to have them in such a way that um, I can access them. So I might actually need to strip off one of these top panels, maybe. Is that? Oh, that takes away that entire side. No, that's no good. Oh, hello. What cargo bay parts are those? Ah, they're small 1.25 meter cargo bay parts. I did not know I had those. Well, one meter, whatever. Right, no, I don't want that. 
And there's a two meter cargo bay parts. Okay. And there's the S2 parts. There's a lot of the parts that are in the the like the mod packs that I haven't even paid to unlock yet. Um, no, S2 crew tank. Would that actually fit inside? You could have it something like this where the hatch was actually sticking out through the skin, but I don't know if that would... How would that work? How would that look? Would it just be naff? Not 100% sure. Can't even get it to... Nah, uh, no, we won't bother with that. We'll, we'll use the S2 parts. Um... Right. I'm having to perform, like, I don't know what you'd call this, tog surgery or something. I rearrange these panels so they're coming off the, oh god, this is going to be a pain. <laughs> it's going to be such a pain. Right. Can I get it so it attaches to the edge of... No, I probably already flipped it, so that's why it's not behaving itself. Uh, let's go to structural. To work to structural panel. There we go. It's attaching in a weird way. Though it might be because that part's not quite flat. But there we go. More or less ish can tweak that very slightly not quite sure why they were facing like that but uh, anyway yeah there's all kinds of odd little gaps and whatever in this so we've got a bigger hole in the top um, do we want a bottom hole as well I mean, that's obviously a very important question, is whether you want a bottom hole or not. Yes. It's very important to know. Bottom holes. Yes. We're a very highbrow stream here, aren't we? Yes, we are. Right, if I use some... There should be some circular structural... Parts. No, that's not... A, that's a very big crew thingy. We don't want that... Uh, where are they? Oh, well, I'm not in structural for a start. There we go, structural fuselage. That's the one we want. So it's just an empty structural part. Back to utility. And... There we go. Right, is that going to be quite over the hole kind of oh that's awkward I can put some of the smaller panels there but we might want to uh, no I guess we can't do that that particular panel there is holding the entire upper structure so uh, no is the answer to that question <laughs> never mind uh, we might just have to not use that as a thing. So anyway, that's got four kerbals. And we'll want a command pod part, really. We can go for the inline cockpit. Which can carry another two. Actually, which is heavier? Does it actually tell me? Uh, that one is very slightly lighter than that one. So we'll probably just go with the original one then. So they can use that door and um, I don't know. But I think we'll leave the larger hole there. So as to what else we want to go inside this thing, probably not a lot. Uh, I might stick in another structural fuselage part just to run off some um, some struts from. So make sure we save that. So 
take another structural fuselage down there. I might close up the the rear, like the what was the 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 drive hole. Have I ever made a mouse ship? I, I don't think so. I think I attempted to make a mouse at one point, and then it didn't go very well. Right. Um, you know, those are kind of getting in the way at the moment. Let's. Oh. Let's get rid of the launch clamps. And then let's also, I've just realized I should switch the root part back. Because it's going to be really awkward trying to grab that as a root part, whereas the cockpit is much easier to get access to. So, um, I can never remember but it, I take comfort from the fact that when you see someone like Scott Manley playing they seem to do that a lot as well so I'm not the only one that can never remember right structural we won't completely close up this hole for now just because it makes the access easier Well, in theory, it makes it easier anyway. I could actually, I've realized I don't, I probably don't have the, uh, the Kerbal, I don't, I don't have the music in KSP turned on. So does anyone want me to turn the music in KSP on? Because it's not bad music. I tend to just play without it normally, because if I'm playing KSP, I maybe have um, like YouTube going in the background. And obviously the music kind of interferes with that. Um, all right, wheels. We need wheels, so that's a thing. I mean, this just looks a hundred percent like a tog. So much like a tog. Right, utility. Now, what are the wheel biggest wheels I have available? I think it's these Rover Max ones. They're not big. Or I could put on the tiny little idly piddly bit little Rove Max ones. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think we're going to use those somehow. Or I could put on like this is going to be a lander. I could put on these big chunky landing legs. Do we want the Tog to be able to drive along on the moon, or do I actually want it just to to be landed? Because, you know, we could have these, these these huge, great big landing legs and it might look kind of cool. Uh, it probably is quite squashed for a TOG. But getting the scale in KSP is quite difficult and I was never intending this to be a completely accurate representation. It doesn't look that much like a TOG, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's vaguely TOG shaped. And I've seen people do... Uh, what's that one look like? I've seen people do um, quite impressive looking tanks in, uh... oh that's more of a, okay that's a vertical one. I mean you could have like, you know, a bazillion of these things. I'll just do it very, very roughly. Except it's never going to move, but you know, it'll look like the Togipede or something. <laughs> the Tog Mark IV. That would be very that would that would be incredibly steampunk, wouldn't it? A tog. Except instead of tank tracks, it's got legs. That would be so steampunk. Uh I'll I'll just check. I'm just gonna check where the big wheels are on the science tree. Let's have a look in R&D. Right, we need a 550 and it's advanced motors. Um, I mean, I would like to go for wheels, yeah. Oh, there we go, there's the really big ones. So we need more science, basically, before I can unlock the wheels. So we might not get it built this time round. What can I do that would get me science? You know what, I think we're going to end up doing one of these, uh, doing a, a moon mission or something after all. 
Um, so what we'll do is I'll, I'll launch a mission and we'll get some science and it might be enough science to unlock the wheels for the TOG. Right, it's going to be one of those. Which pilot shall we get? It's a pity you can't rename pilots in-game. That would be cool. Because I could rename my um, my Kerbals, my Kerbonauts, after you guys. And then I could kill you with great glee. I mean, wait, did I say that part out loud? Ah. Ah. Uh, just, you know, forget I said anything there. It's fine. Right, we'll take a scientist because scientists can reset the actual science experiments. Uh, add on Kerman. He used to work at Firefox. And he's called Add on. Get it? Because it's a joke? Ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha? No? Never mind. Okay. Okay. I just, you know, thought I'd try. Yeah. Yo, we can have Billy Kerbal. I like that. Yes. We'd send Billy on all the really dangerous missions. Except he'd be like Jebediah. He'd just enjoy it the whole way, even as he was about to die horribly in a massive ball of fire. Right, one of the things you can do if you're using Mech Jeb, if you're a complete scrub like me, is... Let's see. We'll have... Uh, what stage are we stopping at? Stage four, right. We can do the in cockpit view, except we can only really look out the windows. It's a bit messy. Um, okay, there's one of these ones that has the correct thing. There we go, and then I'm not. I don't get the full functionality out of these, but I get certain uh, some functionality. So this is a Cupil module, and because I've got stuff stacked on the top it it kind of like blocks most of the view but we can't see that much anyway so yeah we could do an in cockpit launch which is always kind of fun but i've seen people you can see people doing missions where they just do the entire mission from inside the cockpit and you need mods for it basically you need mods that add functionality to the uh, the screens but it's it's kind of fun and i've only got partial functionality but i can see the nav ball and i can see my uh very wobbly orbit looking thing and then I can see uh, some partial information I wonder if there's a thing where I can find my staging information there should be but I might not have enough oh, I've got a flight log there I will just watch the thing from the outside oh hello that's a bit of a bug with I think scatterer that's not supposed to be like that yeah <laughs> slightly peculiar. So, anyway, um, we're on to the main stage now. Let's see. About 40 seconds of this. And then the upper stage should kick us into orbit. It's a very nice looking game with Scatterer when it doesn't slightly bug out on you. And actually, if we go out to the uh, orbit map view... It looks quite pretty from space. And I've been watching... I mean, Scott Manley's doing a real solar system thing at the moment. Although he's been really struggling to get it working properly with all the mods. Um, but uh, I've seen other people's things in, in real solar system. And uh, realistic progression. Because you need a, a lot of mods to make it work correctly. Because the default stuff is all scaled for Kerbal-sized stuff. In terms of, you know power output and delta v and all that kind of thing so you you need a bunch of mods and uh it's quite impressive when you see somebody running an actual mars mission i i could never do anything with anything remotely like that i don't think um okay yeah it's set to auto pop out the solar panels that's fine oh why have i don't know that's slightly odd temporarily lost control of the mouse I really don't know what Scatter is doing right now. It's most peculiar. It's one of the overlays has gone slightly wonky. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit weird. Let's see inside the cockpit. We can actually look outside and see that, yeah, it still looks wonky. It kind of looks cool, though. You can fly along and it's like, yee, I'm going into space. I can actually see my orbit starting to shape up. 
It'd be really nice if, you know, I could get a top view or a front view or whatever you want to call it, but there's some quite important bits of the rocket up here, so unfortunately not. So anyway, how much delta V do we have on this stage? Do I have any way of seeing it? I don't know, but we're approaching orbital velocity anyway. Can I use that to turn on the lights? No. I don't actually know how I can turn on the lights from in here. Now that's just changing the marker mode. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, there, there goes the solar panels. No, we're going to have to <laughs> do that if I want to turn the lights on. So yeah, this, this is probably way more expensive than it needs to be for a, a lander for Minmus and the moon. But uh, I just, I really wanted, for some reason, I just really wanted this kind of overhead rocket design. Where you've actually got the rocket stages sitting on top of the command capsule. So it's basically like the Mars one I showed you. Um, it pops the um, things off the side when you're in re-entry and this whole thing is what re-enters the atmosphere and, and comes down in one piece, hopefully. So, for quickness' sake, I am again going to be a complete scrub and just use MechJab to set up a rough and ready... Uh, oh god, which one is the one I want? Maneuver Planner, there we go. To set up a, a like a rough encounter. And if I go for... I'll go for the moon. And we'll go for somewhere on the moon I've not actually landed yet. And I haven't been to the poles. So that might be a place to go to. Right. Uh, is it Homan Transfer? I think so. We'll actually have a little tweak of it. Okay, and execute next node. We'll make sure it can auto stage as well. We. Yeah, there's something odd going on with Scatterer right now. I'm illuminating the entire planet. That's not supposed to happen. That's very odd. That's almost certainly going to be Scatterer. We'd have to maybe restart or go back to the space center to like jog it back to how it's supposed to be. But we're not going to do that. There's also mods for things like when I'm looking at the sun, for instance, no stars, looking away from the sun, or not in direct sunlight, there are, you know, suddenly stars, which is, oh, there we go, kind of how it would be. I don't know how many mods have got on this, actually. It's not a huge number. We're not talking like Skyrim numbers of mods. Although talking of Skyrim, I'm sure there's somebody out there somewhere that's made a mod that makes it so that all your Kerbals can have no clothes on. Because, you know, this is the internet after all. Somebody will have done such a thing. And there we go. So we're on to the final stage. And this is like the... It's going to be the injection stage. It's going to be the landing stage. It's going to be the return stage. I've, I've just done this probably completely overcomplicated all-in-one design. Just because I felt like it. And because you can do stuff like that in KSP. So let's look out the window again. So that's us breaking out of orbit. Hopefully breaking into a new orbit. I do find it slightly disturbing that you can see your own eyeballs. That's always weirded me out. Yeah, yeah, that is a bit strange. So, on our way to the moon, um, I can't even remember what engines these are. The Terriers, there we go, the LB-909s. Oh, I discovered a cool thing, by the way. If you hold down the um, the uh, the Alt key when you're scrolling in and out, except it it obviously takes a while, but you can <laughs> you can get some. Look at that! You can get that kind of tiny planet effect. This is just within KSP. There's no mods for this, but to, to you know, it's not a mod thing. So you can get some really, really extreme 
uh, camera angles and it looks properly weird. And then I think we can go the opposite way. I can't remember how I reset it. But you can sort of, you know, change the focal length so it's completely the opposite and you're zoomed all the way in. But it's kind of cool to know if you're doing, you know, cinematic stuff. There's some quite cool people doing um, those kind of uh, KSP animatics that they're just, they look nice. They're cool. So you've got the regular zoom and then you've got that you know, holding down the alt key and scrolling to, to change the focal length. And it just, it, it just kind of looks cool and neat and it's completely useless, but it's nice that it's there. You should play H1Z1 and you can see your eyes and teeth from inside your head. That's kind of creepy. Right. So we've got our encounter. We'll just go and warp all the way ahead. Um, get rid of the utility, yes. Panel, we don't need that. Now I could, I don't have to, but I could maybe try and link this up with my um, my ore extracting, you know, thingy, which I haven't really come up with a good name. I need a good acronym for those. But you could do that because I've got a scientist. I could make several hops around the moon, basically, because I've got that thing collecting fuel for me. Right, periapsis is thirty-three thousand, so we'll just add a maneuver that oh, pulls us into orbit. fine. The question is, do I have a docking port on this? I've just had that thought. And oh, there's one of the scatterer bugs, yes. It kind of leaves the atmosphere overlay thing on the screen. And it kind of looks a bit weird and annoying. Right. Yeah, do I have a docking port? Did I stick a docking port under this shielded section, or is it just... Uh, no, it's just a uh, monoprop tank. I don't actually think I have a docking port, so I might not be able to go through with my master plan of let's get some fuel. And I could have put a docking port on, but never mind, it's too late now. We're here. I'm just going to have to go with the fuel that I've got. So, I think we'll do... Uh, we'll do a polar landing, because I've not done a polar landing at all. If I turn on flags, I can see where various landing sites... Um, uh, I've called on my landers Codicy, because of course I have. I don't know what to call this one. I don't even know which mission this would be. We're probably up to like 10. Well, we won't call this one the Codicy. We'll call this the, uh, let's see, rename Vissel. Uh, Vissel. <laughs> yes, the Vissel. <laughs> what? We'll call this one, in honour of my stream, uh, Lander for Ants. There we go. So, we are now in Moon Orbit. Um, is there any science we can do while we're up here? Log gravity data, so we can do that. Because I've only recently gotten uh, the gravity things, so... There's a lot of places where I don't actually have gravity data for yet. Let's just do a very quick EVA to grab that and I could act oh yeah this is one of the bugs by the way uh, I'm controlling the Kerbal but oh yeah the viewpoint is locked to oh there we go although I can actually manually uh, okay there we go I might actually be having said it's one of the bugs it might be the mod that I'm using 
Right, just grab grab the ladder. There we go. This is why I have a ladder for things like this. Now let's take the gravity data and just record. There we go. Right, I'll pull that ladder up because you know we will land at some point. So this was the main reason why I wanted to do this kind of design, so I could have the landing legs inside a service bay. It was pretty much that. Doesn't make any particular sense, I just really wanted that, so there you go. Right, landing guidance. I'm gonna quick save because of course I can... I'm terrible at landing, I'm absolutely bloody awful. But, um, of course, when you're picking a thing from orbit, you can't necessarily... Polar crater, should we go for that? You can't necessarily pick somewhere that's completely flat. So, we will say we want to land at target. And that means we're going to have to change our plane, basically. So, we're only going to have enough delta-v to make one landing. But I might be able to make some more um, uh, gravimetric readings while I'm up here. Well, obviously, you know, with KSP, you're exactly right, Philo Farnsworth. It's how the thing looks that's important. Who cares about the Delta V performance or whether it makes sense or not? It's how it looks, goddammit. So that's us changing our... Inclination, I say us, you know, the royal us, it's Mech Jeb. Mech Jeb is changing the inclination because I'm a scrub. It's the, the the doing of the missions and the planning of the missions and the designing of the craft that I like. The actual figuring out, you know, when to burn and all that kind of stuff and making landings and I'm just terrible at it. I'm just, I, I can't handle moving stuff around in, in what are supposed to be 3D environments. Anyone that's ever seen me fly in War Thunder would know that that's true. So, yeah, KSP is no different. I should be alright, Far Berserker. I should be okay. I've picked what looks like a relatively flat area. Trying to land on the poles themselves can be quite difficult because of the way um, uh, in KSP the... Oh, that's the wrong button. Um, it kind of... It's mapped out like... Um, orange slices so it's from pole to pole as far as the terrain mapping is go uh, the terrain mapping goes so the terrain around the poles is like weirdly compressed it looks very strange and it's very very rough and it makes for a difficult landing anyway right 1800 delta v won't take that much to land and then take off again so i think we'll be all right we might have a bit of a high energy return to kerbin though um, oh, we've still got loads of monoprop, that's fine. Hey, Persona Non Grata, thanks for joining us. Right, I'm not quite sure what Mech Jeb's doing at this point. <laughs> it just says, moving to low deorbit burn point, except it's not fast. Uh, it's not, you know, fast warping, time warping, there we go, so... I didn't know. Not quite sure what it has in mind. Maybe it's just close enough that it doesn't need to? I don't know exactly. We can always just, you know, have a look inside and... Can we actually see the moon from here? There we go. It's still got the weird shader thing going on, so it looks strangely bluish, but... Uh, yeah. And we can also see... This is not the most circular orbit of the moon exactly, but it's fine. It's basically fine. Oh, also, that's kind of <laughs> on the, the flight log, because I've renamed the ship. Add-on Kerman boarded PPD-12 cupola module on a lander for ants. There you go. So I'm not quite sure why this is only partially working. I think there's maybe other mods I would need to get the, the screens fully working. Uh, Raster Prop Monitor is that mod, by the way. But, um, yeah. It's more like a framework. It's the mod that allows that stuff to work, but I think you need other mods to actually then, like, grab the data from things. Uh, there's actually... I think I've got camera parts. You can put cameras 
on the exterior and interior of your ship. Well, I say interior, in things like cargo bays. You can put in cameras and it will uh, look at stuff. Right. Um, space over the moon's midlands. What's the science data I've already got? High over the moon's... Highlands, so we'll keep experiment. We'll exactly do the same thing. Uh, we'll just quickly turn off auto warp. And we will we'll once again EVA and grab the uh, science data. And it's. Whoa! Would you just stay grabbed onto the ladder and not be like. I know you desperately want to go flying off. There we go, take data. Maybe I'll just leave the ladder down for now. Still not quite sure why we're... I don't... I don't know. <laughs> okay, now we're auto-warping. There we go. Uh, uncommon. I mean, it could be a couple of things. Um, hardware would probably throw up a blue screen or something like that. So it's maybe more likely to be drivers. But uh, I'm, I'm no expert. That just, in my experience, if, it, if it's going to freeze up like that, it's probably a driver issue. And again, we're getting some weird lighting bug. We are literally lighting up the moon so powerful are my spotlights. I don't think they are. I think that's just a weird bug. I've, I've never encountered that particular bug before. Don't know why it's doing that. It's slightly strange. Right, that was just a course correction. Maybe I should have parked it in a lower orbit before I told Mech Jeb to make a landing, because it's taking its sweet ass time. Right, it's on the correct plane. You know what? We're gonna abort auto land for now. And I'm going to tell Mech Jeb we want to be in a lower orbit. I think we've got enough Delta V to mess around a bit. I hope so. I did quick save. Right, uh periapsis. 30 kilometers, execute next node. Um, I Yeah, highly irregular is probably the best way to put it. Yeah, I don't really have a set streaming schedule. Uh, normally I don't tend to on Sundays because I'm at my parents, but I'm not this week. Um, I get invited over for dinner and my stepmother is a very good cook. So normally I take those in invitations because um, I like food. Which is, I know, it's a, quite a, a shameful thing to say out loud, but it, it feels good to admit it, you know? It feels good to get that off my chest. I am, in fact, a food lover. I like food. Sometimes I even eat multiple meals in the same day, but I'm, I'm, maybe that's going a bit too far. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm going for there, but it's a joke, right? It's a funny joke. Ha <laughs> everyone laughed at the funny joke. Right, spend a little bit more Delta V circularizing in a much closer orbit, and then maybe Mech Jeb will get a bit less confused about landing at the place we want to land. <laughs> You're still cross at me for being slim. Okay. Are you trying to grow a beard, Sombra? I mean, I have I have thought about growing a tank fest beard, literally just for tank fest, but um, in the end, I decided against it, just because I don't think I would look very good with a beard. Right. Uh, that is why is that popped up there? I don't want that to pop up there. Just above the moon's midlands. Right. We'll keep that experiment. Um, oh, let's keep pointing the right way. Okay, 
And once again, we'll grab that Gravioli detector data. And it's actually going to stay on the ladder this time. So that's fine. I wonder if we can do like an EVA report now. Okay, I think we probably got all the EVA report data I can from around the moon. So, uh, let's retract the ladder and once again tell it land at target and see what happens. That should slightly less freak out this time. <laughs> okay. You're one of those people for whom beards are... Okay. I mean, I could kind of grow a beard, but it would be a Lincoln beard. It would be a bit of a neck beard. I don't think I really want a neck beard. I can't even do proper... I, I couldn't do, like, you know, mutton chop sideburns or anything like that. My hair just doesn't grow in the right places. At least, you know, on my face. I hasten to add as if that somehow makes that previous sentence any better. <laughs> I should just shut up now, really, shouldn't I? Right, this should be the final... Here we go. Yeah, this is the final deorbiting uh, burn. It's a pity these windows aren't bigger. Like the side windows. Because it is pretty cool just to be able to look out and go, wee. I'm tempted to design one of these things around that... Um, that is it K no the B9 like the the big glass cockpit one which completely impractical in terms of actual space flight uh, space flight space flight purposes but it it's just so cool to see the interior view from that thing right um this has used up a bunch of delta v but it's fine we'll have enough to get back home probably i probably won't have to rescue my own Astronaut that I sent up here, probably. Right, we're looking good. It's just a question of uh, how much Delta V I might use up in the process. And we can also, oh yeah, log gravity data there. Now, some of them give you, you know, data from just above the. The, the moons wherever, you know, specific biomes and others, it's just, you know, in space near. I don't, I don't think there's any other bits of science. Okay, I can't do any other science until we actually land. Which is going to be quite soon now. Ooh. This is using up more Delta V than I had hoped. But I guess making that plane change did gobble up a bit of Delta V. This is the point where I really wish I had a docking port somewhere on this so I could actually, you know, have it meet up with my um, actual refueling operation. And it could refuel from stuff on the moon. But, um, no, it's fine. Okay, we just have to get back into orbit and point back at Kerbin. There should be enough Delta V for that. Right, here we go. A lander for ants is about to touch down. <laughs> oh dear. Did you just fall afoul of... Uh... Whoops. Um, <laughs> but somebody might want to unban the monk new. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's fallen victim to Moobot. Anyway, we're down. We've made it. Huzzah. So, let's extend the uh, the ladder. We'll go for a moonwalk, we'll gather all of the science. We definitely don't have enough Delta V to make a hop to another biome. Right, so, crew report, which we can just transmit right away. Uh, let's see what else we've got. So, we'll actually want to grab that first and then store it in there 
Uh, we can do an EVA report from here and then store that and we can actually right click and do it all from here so keep experiment collect data and then we can restore the goo container not that it, I really have to log gravity data log seismic data we can take those log temperature and last but not least neast neast is a word last but not least um yeah no just pretend you can't see that oh what what no what no don't fall over why did you fall over why did that explode why did the landing leg just randomly explode wasn't supposed to do that right if i flick back to the I don't fully understand what happened there. Right, there we go, materials bay. What? <laughs> well, if you know why, oh dear. If you know why the landing leg exploded. No, it's definitely not too, that's literally the first time that's ever happened with this, this design. Oh, wait, I press F, don't I? You can actually climb up the lip there. That is really quite peculiar. That's never happened before. Okay, right, so we've got all the science experiment data. It's like I just nudged it with little... What's his name? I don't actually know my astronaut's name now. Uh, take surface sample, EVA report. Um, plant flag, yes, let's plant. Add-on, there we go, add-on Kerman. Add-on just nudged the landing leg and it randomly exploded. It's not happened before. It just hasn't. It's, it's odd. It's very odd. So, um... The flag is going to be called Polar Crater. Hello, Twitch! <laughs> How many people are watching right now? Because Twitch still says 67, and that can't be right. It's got to be, I don't know. If there's like a dozen of you, I'll be happy. Oh god, that brings back memories a little, Mark. The R2, yeah, the, is that one of the Japanese ones? 40. 40? Really? There's 40 people watching. Good grief. Okay. 40 people watched this and a leg exploded for, uh, if I can spell correctly absolutely no reason whatsoever there we go so that's now immortalized in flag form apparently i can climb the flagpole <laughs> okay right so um <laughs> it's one of the slightly more drunk looking landings that i've ever performed but i mean we we got here it's fine oh apparently i had wait um i think it's probably the surface eva report i think if i transmit the eva reports that i've got is there another one no okay so that's fine eva Does it count that even though I've landed? Yes, okay, no, okay, it was just a duplicate EVA report and I'm getting confused for no reason. So back off home and that might be enough science to get the uh, things that we need for the, uh, the tog legs, the tog wheels rather. I just, my mind is now, you know, exploding legs. That's gonna be it for the rest of the day. Uh, ascent guidance, let's say 30 kilometer orbits, which is nice and easy. The legs back in. The three remaining legs. We should have RCS turned on. Yes, we do. That's fine.
So we're going to be coming back to Kerbin in a really quite irregular orbit. This is provided we have enough Delta V, of course. I really hope I don't have to do a rescue mission. That would be embarrassing. That would be highly embarrassing. Um, but, uh, yeah, it should be enough, except I don't think it's going to be enough. Oh, dear. <laughs> I can't even... I can't even transfer fuel. I have the the means to produce fuel on the moon and I can't even transfer it because I didn't think to add any docking ports to this design. So that's the thing we need to do back at the VAB is add a docking port to this design. So anyway, it's fine. It's made it into orbit except now I need to launch another craft to go and get our Kerbin and all his science. So this was not particularly according to plan. We're only going to have about 100 meters second uh, delta V left over, and I don't think that's going to be enough to escape the moon's gravity. I mean, I can use the maneuver planner to check. Um, if I just clicked... No, we need close on 300 meters a second delta V. So, uh, whoops. I mean, we've got monoprop. I wonder how much delta V is contained within 50 units of monoprop. I'll put a quick save. And we're going to try this. <laughs> it's not going to work, but you never know. It might be there's enough monoprop. Maybe. Maybe, because what will happen is we'll fire the rockets and um, where are we? Utilities panel. Whoop. Right, so yeah, basically we're trying to get a return orbit to Kerbin. Except that, that return orbit is not anywhere even close. Uh, I don't know. This is probably not going to work. We're just we're just simulating it. That's what we're doing. We're simulating it to find out if I actually need to launch a, a rescue mission. So we've jettisoned that just because we get rid of the extra mass. This is what we'd normally do when we're re-entering Kerbin's atmosphere. Instead we're doing it while we're over the moon. So we're now just relying on the monoprop engines and there's no there's no more mass I can dump basically. Question is how much we might Oh it's going down very slowly though. Like the delta V counter is going down very slowly. <laughs> This is the most dank return I have done in a while. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to see if I can just return on monoprop. It looks kind of cool though. But yeah, this is not how this thing is supposed to fly. We're getting a bit Apollo 13 here. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say this is probably not going to work. I don't think 40 units of of uh, monoprop will give me 160 delta v <laughs> yes this is the sandbox for this is yeah did i actually update that oh god i hope i did the k the, the title did i click the update button well now i definitely have clicked the update title button i don't know if twitch will have actually done it though is it worth time warping this or will the game start to freak out? No, I don't think it will let me do it while I'm under power. Uh, right, 10 meters a second delta V was about 6 units of monoprop, so I'm just doing the maths here. No, it's not going to work. It's really not going to work. So, I didn't actually update the title before. Oops. Your business is appreciated. Well done. Well done, me. Well done. So, right, that thing is in orbit. That's fine. 
So Adon Kerman can just swan around there for a while and admire the view. All this, all this, so I can get some wheels for a tog. I don't think we're actually going to be building the tog today. I think we're just going to get this rescue underway, hope that it's enough science, and then um, do the rest of it. So, uh, oh, why do I need to repair? Did I accidentally wreck the... Oh, God. Apparently, I accidentally wrecked the launch pad. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, so, which thing will I use? Uh, what's got enough delta V? If I do a quick modification, because when we get there, we're going to need to change pl uh, planes to actually make sure we intercept. So I might take one of my existing designs and very slightly strip it down. Um, right, this... Yeah, okay, we'll do this, except we'll strip off the... Um, uh, the What should we call it? The crew cabin. And we'll stick a couple of solar panels on the side there as well. So that, that now has even more Delta V than it had before. Right, solar panels. Solar panels are in utility. And I could put some of the big fancy ones on, except that would be complete overkill. Even fancier. No, we don't want those. We want just the standard thingamy ones. If I can find them. Uh, oh, there we go. Right, so a pair of those, and by pair, obviously I mean three, including ones which block the door. Yes, actually let's stick them there. Uh, let's just, you know, move that up slightly so it looks, you know, neater. It's got to look neat, that's obviously very important. Do I have anything... Right, that's just battery and monoprop. Why have I got monoprop when I don't have... Oh, it's a mystery goo unit. That's not one prop at all. Well, we can actually strip that out. We don't need that. I think that was when I was doing landings. It'd be like, oh, I've just landed in this place. And so therefore, we might as well have a mystery goo unit. We might as well strip off the science units as well. Because uh, we want this to be a cheap launch. Uh, but we will stick on a couple of surface lights. Because I like the surface lights. That was utility, right? Yes. Uh... Right, if I stick, if I stick a, a, a large, a pair of large lights there, there we go, and then I've actually got some blinky lights, I can put some blinky lights on my ship. Put those over the yeah. I'll toggle the flag. Now I think you have to set action groups for those to work properly, which I can now finally do. Okay. Well, actually, I might just set them to cycle mode. There we go. So that's with the one key. Okay. Um, we've got parachutes, we've got mech jab, um, I think we've got everything. So this has got a ridiculous amount of Delta V, as you can see. 28k for a launch isn't bad, we'll just make sure we're not actually carrying a crew, because the point is we're going there to pick up a member of crew. <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Silly Sombra. I thought I would have enough Delta V in that craft. But the fact that we had to make a dramatic plane change to make a, a landing in the polar cru uh, cruiser, the polar cruiser, possibly crater, meant that uh, it didn't quite go according to plan, unfortunately. Right. Uh, let's see, stop the stage three, engage autopilot, and let's launch. So basically, we, uh, we need to rendezvous with the moon. 
and then I need to get this thing to um, rendezvous with add-ons uh, craft and it'll all be fine and it'll all be okay probably I can't do an interior view this time because um, uh, we don't actually have any crew inside the capsule not that these capsules have great windows anyway they've just got that tiny little cabin window there but uh, just kind of um, doesn't show you much oh, I've forgotten to use the thuds on these the the inline well not the inline the radial mountable ones which it looks kind of cool when you're launching it but they're not particularly efficient engines I can't remember why I did it this way rather than have just a single main engine. Probably for the looks. I probably just did it for the looks. So we're coming up on the secondary stage thing. Um, this thing's got quite a decent thrust to weight ratio. At least for these stages. You don't want croutons, you've got enough credits. <laughs> Polar croutons. I don't even know. I don't know half the stuff I say. It just kind of comes out of my mouth and then I immediately regret everything. Usually. I wonder if it was for the gimbling, because these do have a fairly good gimbal range, these engines. And the upper stage, I think it's another LV909, so it's got plenty of uh, Delta V from just that one tank. And I'm probably going to have a, a Delta V left over in this ascent stage, so we'll just use that. It is going to actually um, mean I'll, I'll have, you know, space junk floating around out My here. My business is appreciated. Oh, well, that's a very appropriate name. Thank you, the Venusian, for the follow. For anyone that's missed some or all of this stream up to this point, I will probably upload the VOD to YouTube. Um, I should probably do some kind of, hey, I'm going to go to Tank Fest and there's not going to be videos for a week. Probably more than a week, actually, because it'll take me a couple of days to get sorted when I get back. Uh, but, um, yeah, I won't do what I did last time round, which was, I, I just was like, all right, the next video that comes out must be my Tank Fest video. And then, of course... Um, it was just delayed because uh, not only did it take a little while for Wargaming to sort through the footage and get it uploaded, but then I had to download it as well. So uh, this time I'll just probably come back and try and get to a normal video making schedule and then do a Tank Fest video. But it's not that hard to say Venusian. Unless a lot of people just don't quite know how to say it. Hey, Slightly Bored, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Better something going out of my mouth and regretting it than having something going in and regretting it. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. You're definitely not wrong. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, right, we've got to set ourselves up for uh, going to the moon. At the moment, we it's going to be really unwieldy pointing this thing when we've only got um, the reaction control wheels, basically. I can turn on the lights, though. Right, that's the two surface lights. And if I hit the, the thing... Strobe lights! It's like blinky aircraft lights. It's cool. It's, look, it's going to look even cooler in the dark, I hope. But uh, hopefully it'll also let me see this thing slightly easier. But yeah, I was quite pleased when I discovered that mod. But they are actually meant as blinky aircraft lights, but you can just stick them anywhere, pretty much. Anyway, Maneuver Planner. You'd think I'd know which one it was by now. Uh, Homan Transfer to Target. So... Uh, yes. What? Wait. No. Stay in map view. I know what I'm doing. Mostly. Maybe. Kind of. Um, right, it's that, yes, that's how we want to approach. So execute next nodes, and let's bring up the utilities, auto stage once. So we'll go on to the next stage. It looks slightly weird when you change the 
like the camera part focus and everything's rotating around in a slightly odd because normally it defaults to like the middle mass of the object but I, I installed a mod that lets you um, the hockey is O you can actually like mouse over a part and go I want to focus on this bit but it can have some slightly strange looking effects anyway Oh, it's weird using, yeah, I've, having been, uh, where was it? Probably when I visited Croatia. I don't think it was, I don't think they used QWERTY keyboards in Croatia. So I was, um, I, was it 2009? I think so. God, that's getting on for a, like, we're not far off that being a decade ago now. But I went to visit a friend and um, stayed with him in Zagreb and like used his computer for email and stuff. And it was really weird using a, a keyboard that wasn't a QWERTY keyboard. Oh, what? Um, <laughs> I think I'm still with the craft, it's just the part focus has changed. Oh god, there we go. <laughs> just managed to mouse over and hit zero. That was like, wait, what? No, wait for me. Anyway, now this is, we're onto the main stage now with the blinky blinky lights. It's fine. That was planned. That was meant to happen. I did not at all panic. Ever. Uh. So this does have lots of delta V, and it should be more than enough delta V for there and back because we're not landing actually on the moon. So it'll be fine, and we won't need a rescue mission for the rescue mission, at which point things start getting very silly. Um, right. Let's quick save that just in case anything goes horribly badly wrong, and we'll just warp forwards. It does look a bit odd, like the the strobe lights when you're actually um, fast forwarding. It, it it's quite strange the flickering. Can we actually use the hotkey when we're in time warp? No, we can't. It does have different modes actually. So you've got a double flash, and you've got just. Um, winking on and off so it's not flashing on and off it's kind of and then you've just got solid on so at which point they're just like regular lights I think you might be able to adjust the no wait you can't adjust the colours but there are different colours so you get red ones, green ones and I think amber ones as well because they are uh, intended as aircraft lights so let's uh, pull in to orbit Which should be fine. This is a very, very simple craft. It's just a a high efficiency engine and a reasonably big fuel tank and a command pod. It's a clubbing rocket. <laughs> yeah. I suppose, you know, you could take it that way. I've just realised, I, I, I'm terrible at doing this. I keep forgetting that, of course, I've got the chat on screen, so I've, I end up putting menus and stuff behind the chat window because I forget that there's a chat window. And, of course, that's been there most of the stream now. Oh, dear. Anyway. Now I finally remembered, as I sometimes usually do, almost never. Uh, <laughs> I hope we've come in at the same inclination actually anyway uh, it, it doesn't matter we've got oodles of delta v we've got nearly 3000 delta v so this is the point where i bring up my rendezvous autopilot which helpfully pops up in exactly the same place set as target and we just go engage autopilot and we're now going to spend ludicrous amounts of delta v matching planes and velocities and all kinds of things so this this manoeuvre alone is going to take 760 delta V. This is pretty expensive in terms of delta V. But this is why I sent this rocket, because it'd have lots of spare delta V. 
In space, no one can hear you rave. Yes. That sounds about right. We should probably rename this ship as well. What can we call this ship? Uh, it's... We're going to call this one... It's the... All going... According... To... Plan. Comma... Honest. There we go. It's all going according to plan, honest, which is... If I was an actual mission controller, those are probably not words you would want to hear from my mouth, and yet they're probably words I'd probably say quite often. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the White Lightning uh, KSP sketches, by the way, but they're very good. They're actually some of the guys I support on Patreon. Not a lot. Uh, well, there's not a lot of money, I mean. It's like, I don't support them much, you know. I, I kind of like them, but not very much. No, I mean, I give them a little a bit of monetary support, uh, along with the other people I support on Patreon. Because um, I don't have a lot of spare money, but there's a couple of people that I give a couple of dollars here and there to, including those guys, and I think Maxwell, uh, who else? Um, some others. Dwarf Fortress is another one. But yeah, I... Um, uh, I've been following those guys for a while now and um, the sketches and stuff they do are actually quite funny. <laughs> if I was an actual flight controller I'm pretty sure the astronauts would all go on strike. <laughs> yeah, the strobing's really kind of not so good when it's in uh, physics warp. Lots of launches, but not many landings. Well, it's technically a landing if the thing comes back down and smacks into the ground, right? I mean, objectively, it's gone up and come back down again. So I would say technically that counts as a landing. Technically. Maybe. Right, I think it's putting itself into a phasing orbit. At which point it's uh, right, we're down to two thousand meters a second delta v, which is still quite a lot of delta v. It's fine. No, no, no. Dwarf Fortress is full of elephants and carp and other horrible, scary, terrifying creatures. I have tried several times to sit down and properly get into Dwarf Fortress, and it always defeats me. But I love the idea of it. I love the idea of that game. And I love the stories that come out of that game and reading people's let's plays of it. But it's the interface that I just struggle with. And it's got a horrible interface, but the game itself is fantastic. It's it's just got so much emergent behavior that it it is like almost the poster child for emergent behavior in games with like deep mechanics. And you don't get a lot of those kind of interactions happening in other games, and they're all ro all over the place in Dwarf Fortress, and I think it's just wonderful. Take a look at this. Uh, well, okay, hang on. I'm just going to briefly click out. So I can click on that link, and then I can peruse that link later, and also I can click on VLC instead of Kerbal Space Program, because that's what I meant to do. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home, because people will laugh at you. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, I know people laugh at me. You're all laughing at me right now. I can tell. Don't lie. Caption guy is definitely laughing at me, but he's just perpetually laughing at me. Nothing new there. I couldn't even, from my lander, I couldn't even send them to the space station. That's like, you know, an emergency shelter if it came to that. Because uh, there wasn't even enough Delta V left over. So that's a thing I'm going to have to do. Put docking ports on my design so that I can actually link them up to the um, the, the fueling thingies. The fueling landers. This game really can look quite nice sometimes. Especially if you get some bits of lighting on it like that. Look at that. That's really quite nice. Right, we've got to be quite close. 
This is just moving in for the last bit of manoeuvring. Oh, in fact, there it is. So here we are. We'll just turn off the HUD and enjoy the final approach. You're laughing with me. Oh, that's all right then. Right. We're almost there. We're basically just... Oh, node in 50 odd seconds. So we're just drifting towards it, basically. <laughs> I really do like how this game looks. This is the fun part. This is the fun part. It's just watching the like stuff happening. And it's just... Oh, it's so pretty, this game. At, at times. It's just sometimes all the bits leading up to this, like all the, the landings and the launches and the, you know, we have computers to do that for us. It's fine. I don't need to bother with all those kind of things. Well, we're nearly there. In fact, we're pretty close now. I should. I probably should just be in the habit of, you know, stick on a, stick on a docking port because uh, it'd be useful. Right, we're actually still... going by at a reasonable clip, so I'd better do this... Right, where's the... there we go. Okay. And, and, no, no, that's a hell of a time for that bug. Right, that's one of the other bugs. We're going to have to flick to Space Center and then go back. <sighs> yeah, sometimes it won't let you switch between craft, and that is, that's a Kerbal bug. That's not to do with the mods. Right, back to the tracking station. And we can toggle off the flags. So we're drifting past slightly faster than planned. We're not exactly at a relative halt, but... Uh, God, where is it? It should still be fine. So... Uh, we'll just extend the ladder. It's time to go on a little EVA and take all of the data. So we're just going to leave that there for now. We've made another impromptu space station. That was my intent all along. Yeah. We needed to make another space station. And so I've made another space station completely on purpose. That was it. It was a super secret military contract that didn't show up in the regular contract screen. And I'm sure you guys all believe me, right? Because I'd never make up a ridiculous lie like that. Yeah. Right, Ooh. I think Adon's just happy that he can go back home and uh, go back to his job at Firefox. That joke was so good, I made it again. Right. Uh, that's not quite what I wanted, but that's fine. Uh, execute next node. So we've still got so much Delta V. We could actually go into orbit around Kerbin after returning from the moon with this much Delta V. There is more than enough. Oh yeah, auto warp. So, um, yeah, completely calculated and planned. And it, it was meant to happen like that. Always. It was always meant to happen. And anyone that suggests otherwise will be shot for sedition and treason by the uh, Kerbal Space Agency shock troopers. And if anyone asks why a space agency would need shock troopers, they also will be sent, you know, for re-education and possibly also executed for sedition. <laughs> I like to think... that you know, the entire efforts of this world are going into making this space program so that, you know, the... the that really would be 
space agency shock troopers to to keep the the plebs in line down at the rocket fuel mines because you know basically the entire resources of the planet are going into into ksp although i suppose with the the career mode you've got to earn the, the money and and you know do contracts and whatever But just let me enjoy my fantasies of a dystopian dictatorship, goddammit. Right, uh... Oh, wait, no, yes, okay, warp there. And that should take me... There? Wait, why is it saying three days? I'm slightly confused. Right, there we go. Now it's saying one minute, not three days. Three days would be going all the way around. Yes, basically, yeah. Like, like Kerbin's basically a, a, a planet that's like North Korea. That's exactly it. Um, right, change... Could we go into just a regular? Oh, uh, change periapsis rather, not change apoapsis. So this this might take a while. It's a good thing I'm not using any life support mods. It's the best Korean space program, clearly. Silly Sombra. I mean, not Silly Sombra. <laughs> Philo. <laughs> I mean, I know what a Silly Sombra had in mind. Yeah, I think I've probably got... I mean, it is, we're in quite a wide orbit right now. But we've got so much Delta V left over that I can have a nice circular orbit and then decelerate back to the, uh, the space centre. In fact, I might even try landing near the space center. Right, there we go. That's one maneuver completing. And then we just tell it to circularize. At the next periapsis. Which is doing a weird thing. What? Oh, 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 it's going to hit the influence of the moon, which is going to make it go wonky, apparently. Right, just... No, what? Right. I want you to do that now. Right, execute next node. Do it, do it now. Right, 800 meters a second delta V, but you know what, we've got plenty. Okay, that's why the thing was going wonky, because it would once again be influenced by the moon. So yeah, we can have a nice gentle um, re-entry rather than the screaming 3000 meter a second return from the moon re-entry. Which can get a little uh, hot, maybe. Oh yes, there was a fun bit of history. Let's let's not talk about that. Right, uh, landing guidance, which is somewhere. It's all completely, you know, Begjeb's entirely in alphabetical order, and yet I always have to hunt for things. Because of course I do. So there we go, nice gentle circular orbit. Uh, let's try... Setting that as a target. 
So in theory, we're going to have a nice gentle landing near the uh, the space pad. In theory. In theory. We've only got about 500 meters a second delta V left. I don't know if that's even going to be... Oh no, that wait, that will be enough. Fortunately, our orbit actually took us fairly close. So we've only had to adjust planes a little bit. Which is fine. <laughs> oh, poor you, Raylin. Well, you'll always be welcomed here. Right, what's it doing? Hey, Amarama. I'm never quite sure whether to say Amarama or just Jim. Because if I say, hey, Jim, everyone will go, who's Jim? There's no Jim here. But, of course, I know you're Jim, so, yeah. And now everyone else knows you're Jim, and my private dilemma has been exposed to the world. So, along with my private shame of sometimes that I eat food, now also people know about my inner struggles with whether or not to call you Jim. So, there you go. I'm a deeply tortured soul, I am. Ah, uh, this is, this is, I don't, this is taking a little while. Shall we just tell it to speed up a bit? Can we tell it to speed up a bit? How are we doing? Right, oh, it's doing a thing, maybe, not sure. Doesn't particularly matter if we come down over land or over anything, but of course the, the closer you land to KSP, the more value you get out of your vehicle. Except that doesn't really matter either, because it's literally going to be a Mark 1 command pod and a couple of parachutes and some solar panels. It's not exactly, you know, the most expensive craft I've ever produced. Um, we could actually just say, you know what, land somewhere and it will just land us somewhere. Nice and quickly. Well, that's true. It is actually on the PC war machine and, you know, the the, um, the thinky network. God, what's it called? I've forgotten. That's bad. I should know this. <laughs> that's quite embarrassing. Uh, the Kitmaker Network. There we go. The Kitmaker Network websites. Your name kind of is on there. Hello, Ethel. Thank you for joining us. Oh, right, also. Um, I should just tell it to. Uh, um, okay, there we go. It just burned out the rest of its fuel. There we go. It's fine. We're, we're not going to be jamming up against the thing that we're supposed to be um, jettisoning, which would be a little bit awkward, maybe. So let's just enjoy the ride. It's a good thing there wasn't much fuel left in that tank. <laughs> I should have killed the engine before I made the uh, before I made the switch. But uh, anyway, I remember oh back in the old days when it was just literally visual effects. See, it looks impressive, but because we slowed down to orbital velocity, we're not coming screaming in from the moon directly. Um, there's not much of the ablate is actually going to get burned off. In fact, for just coming down from low orbit, you don't even really need a heat shield. We could actually uh, toggle that. We can see add-on actually inside the thing. For some reason, they decided to make the, the actual capsule door be completely solid. But uh, anyway, if you're wondering about that line there, by the way, that that's another scatterer thing. It doesn't do shadows properly from other ob objects distantly in the sky, so it looks a bit weird. Anyway. Coming down overland, it looks like. Parachutes should pop out quite soon. And uh, I can start wrapping up the stream. 
so um i don't know there's, there's going to be a bit of drifting down if i might not even well no we were going to see if that was enough science weren't we we were we'll see if it's enough science that gets recovered because i've got all of the science all of the tasty tasty science uh but um, while we are slowly drifting down, I don't know, what should we talk about? Ask, ask me some questions or something. I've got to get in practice because I'm doing a Q&A session at Tankfest. So, um, I've, I've, you know, I've got, to, I've got to limber up or something. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to fill time here. But no, ask, go on, ask me some questions. It's not going to be quite the same without... Um, oh, what's the name? I think she's going to be there, Cinder or whatever her name is, or Cinder. Who I've not met in person, that's going to be the first time I meet her. It's going to be interesting, because if she's there, it'll be the first time I meet her. And it's going to be the last time I see Ektar as well, because of course he's departing after Tankfest. He's leaving um, uh, for parts unknown. But he's, he's sticking around until something like the week after Tankfest. Who is Couch and Guy? Oh, that, that's a classic. That's been asked many a time. There's never really been a straight answer. Some say Caption Guy is secretly Batman. Some say he's Elvis. Some say he is moonlighting from his job as the Stig. But uh, all we'd really know is he's a jerk. Where's who going? Ektar. Is Ektar going to Mars? I don't know. I mean, I suspect not. But if Ektar was going to be an astronaut... To go on a Mars mission, I mean, that would certainly be a, a hell of a step up from a job at Wargaming. There's no question about that. Uh, is Caption Guy Jeremy Clarkson? I don't think he's casually racist enough to be Jeremy Clarkson. But, you know, he might be somebody that reads Jeremy Clarkson's column in whatever newspaper Jeremy Clarkson writes a column for. I'm sure he writes a column for some newspaper or other. It's probably a tabloid. I don't read tabloids. I only occasionally read non-tabloids, but um, yeah, no, you would not, could not pay me to buy a tabloid. That doesn't even really make sense, does it? Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, what's the meaning of life? Well, clearly you've never read any Douglas Adams. Otherwise, you would know the answer to that question is very simply 42. Which is an answer that's so obvious that really anybody could grasp it once you've thought about it. I mean, obviously, within the book itself, it took um, a, a greatly, massively complicated computer to figure it out. But in real life, of course, as we all know, it's a lot easier to figure out that the answer is 42. But as in the book, we just, you know, don't know the question. So there's that. Anyway, we're nearly down. The completely smooth and problem-free mission is nearly over. There were no issues whatsoever. Anybody that says so is clearly lying and will be taken out for re-education. Type 5 or mouse? Mouse. The mouse was my first love. And I've played the Type 5 on the sandbox server, but it's no mouse. I mean, it doesn't have those sexy looks for one thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, I actually didn't... Wait, how much science? 672 science. Yes, that is enough science. And add-on Kerman actually went up a level as well. So, we have enough science to buy the mouse wheels. Well, not the mouse wheels, the, the dog wheels. So there we go. I've, I've got the heavy lander wheels. We can now put wheels on the space tog. Um, but that'll be for some other time. Next time I'm messing around with KSP on the stream, I'll build a space tog. So, um, yeah, that's it for now. I will put on some music to round things out, but thank you to all those that uh, have stuck around and kept watching after I stopped playing uh, um, World of Tanks. And, you know, thank you if you even just came for World of Tanks. And, uh, well, not that you'd still be watching at this point. I don't know what I'm saying now. Just thank you for watching anyway. And uh, I'm going to go away and do something else for the rest of my evening now. Probably watch more arrested development or something but uh if you have followed me i appreciate it you can also find links to youtube twitter facebook etc below so you can track what i'm doing there as has been pointed out by people in the chat i don't really stream on a regular basis uh, it's just when 
I feel like doing it, basically. Although this VOD probably will make it onto YouTube. So, uh, uh, for those that have missed some of it, you can always go and check it out there. Uh, oh, wow, little Mark. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. That's good to know, I think. Uh, so, thank you all for tuning in. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you may be, and I hope to see you next time.